Greetings, people of Earth. I'm Rick Harold. Thanks for watching my video and listening to my podcasts. Yes, today we're talking about books, or all the books, certainly all the public domain books, in the size of a Tums device. Now, I don't just mean that the data storage is going to be that size. I mean, the device is literally this size, or the size of a dime. Now, you might go, that's ridiculous. Sure. I'll, I'm going to talk about some stuff here which will be seemingly ridiculous, but it's for a point. And the point is to think different and to approach problems differently. So certainly we know that in the size of this Tums, you can have a micro SD or even a chip which can store character form all the public domain books using compression and other mechanisms and it's because this would be not picture books, um, you would be able to store all the characters in there. You also would be able to have in a stack device like this, a battery capable of powering a display of some kind and even Bluetooth connectivity where you could put a microphone on this so that you could say, go to chapter B, go to chapter C, go to Moby Dick, go to this, whatever, and it could then direct it. Now, of course, there's one big question here. What's the display? How could you possibly see anything? Well, a couple of points with that. Backing up a little bit, current characters, the Latin characters, are ancient, really. They've been around, I don't know, two, 3,000 years. There was forms of them before that, but they're pretty old. Chinese characters, similar maybe older, but they're pictogram kind of characters. All of these characters were made by for people to use a pen or some sort of writing device to put onto paper or parchment. And they have a certain size to them to differentiate them using a single color, black normally, on some lighter color. And that forced a certain design. Nobody sat around thinking about it. I mean, it started with hieroglyphics, if you think about it on how they would write it. That's kind of old thinking. The Latin characters are also based on phonetics, which I think is actually really good because you can create dynamic language, you can add to it. The Chinese characters are pictographic and they're all uniquely different, although there are bases within them. So as a person who deals with data compression a lot and in fact working with my daughter on something separate, a, a game, it occurred to me that today, if we could create a new link or new mechanism, you could assume that people are going to use a device and that the device would have a screen, an LCD screen. And now imagine you use color as a mechanism for displaying, I'll just say characters initially, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So instead of a shape, which takes up a decent amount of space, you could just have a single color. So for instance, E, which is the most common letter, at least in English, could be simply a green dot. The letter T, which is also very common, would be a blue dot. So a, blue, a green dot and a blue dot would be ET. And of course, you can still go left or right. Now, through combinations of red, green, blue, and yellow, you could have one, two, three, or four colors high. And of course, yes, you'd have to relearn this stuff. That's another discussion and I'll, I'll mention that later. But with these colors, you could have very, very small print that because a human eye is capable of seeing a great deal of detail and the human eye is very attuned to color. So you could have in a very tiny space, 10, 20 characters, very small. In fact, easily this small. So that could display words, single position words. The second part of this, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second because I know that's still a little bit kind of crazy, different character set. The second part of this is, I, I talked to a doctor a few years ago, unrelated to this stuff, where he work, he's an eye doctor and he works with people who have a, a problem where they can't track page pages so that when they're moving to read they can't do it so I wrote a little test program and showed it to him and he had seen some stuff like this before where 
it displayed the word in the same spot on the page all the time. Of course, it's electronic. Well, that was great because it's the people with, who have the eye control problem with the muscles, instead of tracking across and getting lost as they would go down the page, would just stare at a single spot and the word would cycle there. And in fact, this isn't new. There's been tests done, and I wrote a program just to test it, where a regular, a regular person who doesn't have eye issues could read much, much faster because you're not moving your eye across a page. The only reason we have to do that is because it's two, 3,000-year-old mechanism of forcing you to move left or right and down the page and changing pages. Speed readers know this, and they read blocks at a time. Now imagine having a display where it's displaying the word or a series of words. So you can sometimes display up to five words. depends on the size at uh, some certain speed, okay? How fast? I don't know. A good reader can read about 300 words a minute. I know speed readers do faster than that. Just in some of the empirical tests that I had done, you can go easily up to 15 to 1,800 words a minute if you're not moving your eye and start recognizing it. I didn't go through and push it to see if you could go faster. And also talking to the doctor is quite interesting in how the eye perception and the, the, how fast the eye can recognize a pattern. So now you've got two things. You've got a different character set, and you've got a different mechanism where you're not physically moving your eye and taxing your eye. So going back to the first part again, the character set's different, and you might go, well, that's crazy. Yes, I understand, it's crazy. <laughs> but if you see Chinese on a page, if you don't read Chinese, it's crazy, right? You don't know what it is. You'd have to learn it. You see... And this is the screenshot from the game, and it's not meant to be optimal in terms of size. These colors on the page, yes, yeah, equally crazy to the crazy Chinese characters for people who don't know Chinese. Versus something you've seen every year of your existence over and over, and you had to take a lot of classes in it. And you just learn it because you're embedded in the language. But this takes advantage of the devices, allows you to leverage what your eye is able to do with color. So it's not just black on white, it's minimal color. And the other aspect of adding to this would be, it's meant to be optimized and compressed data. So for instance, I said E is one dot. So then the less uh, used characters, let's say Z, might be three colors because it's not used as much. You might also have words like the and in and of that are very common a set of four, four colors. So you might have, you know, red, green, green, blue in a row as a word. So that's borrowing a little bit from kind of Chinese where you're taking words or concepts which are very common and making them a single row of four dots. And now you can smash in a lot of information in a very small amount of space. So word compression, character compression, minimization of eye movement, all easily that can be fit into something like this with a battery, Bluetooth, and a SD card of some kind. Um, quite amazing. And of course, trying to get everybody to read a new character set is a whole stretch. This is something we're not doing. We're not working on it. My daughter and I actually created a game where people would have to learn these characters and then guess the characters in order and then you, how fast you could rethink or relearn is the game. And the game's on, it's still in process. Um, but I think the other main part about this, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, is trying to always look at things fresh. And in this case, we're like in a game that we're doing, there's no assumption about characters. Just because we've been using it for two or 3,000 years with black on white doesn't mean it has to be that way, right? That's really actually not the most efficient way when you have devices all over the place now. So you can put something on a Tums size, uh, all the books of the uh, public domain, plus any books that you want easily, and <laughs> learn this new character set, and you're good to go. All right, thanks for listening, and take it easy.